Okay, so this time what we're going to do is spend a little time going through how to get standardized scores um, in Excel. So we're going to use the standardized function to do this. We're also going to learn a couple of tricks about how to um, make Excel do some math for us more quickly rather than to have to type equations over and over. So we're going to work with the set of data that I worked with in the previous demo. We have individuals in an ID column who have certain amounts of stress and symptoms, uh, physical symptoms that they're experiencing. So first, let's go ahead and let's use our stress variable again. So we've seen the distribution kind of stress scores. Um, we've done this previously with our histogram um, to get an idea of the data. And we can get ideas we've also seen. Um, is this normal? Well, there are different ways you can measure that. The descriptive output includes two important measures for normality, which are skewness and kurtosis. Um, so here are the numbers for stress. So these are numbers that I would call really quite uh, good. Generally, the rule of thumb, it's just a heuristic, it's not hard and fast law, is that as long as kurtosis and skewness do not exceed plus or minus three, then you're probably okay. Um, having kurtosis and skewness at zero represents normality. Uh, if you have exactly zero for skewness, then you have a perfectly symmetrical database, data set. And if kurtosis is zero, then it's normally peaked. Negative would mean it's a little flat. Positive would mean it's a little peaked, which are, of course, platy and leptokurtic, uh, respectively. So, you know, the stress might not look perfectly normal in this distribution. You know, we have a couple outliers on the extreme end, maybe obviously some positive skew here. And in fact, we can see that the skew is positive right here. It tells us that there is this little bit of positive skew to stress. But none of this is really extreme. There are tests, the Kolmogorov smirnov test, other types of tests that people use to evaluate whether or not a distribution is normal. We're not going to spend too time doing normality diagnostics in this class. But all that to say, before you decide to standardize scores, the assumption, of course, is that the scores are already normally distributed and that you are just turning these normally distributed scores into a set of scores that is standard normal. So we're going to go ahead and do that, uh, assuming that our data is, in fact, normal enough based on the evidence that we've seen in the histogram, the skewness and kurtosis. We see that it's clearly unimodal. And again, the only things we had to worry about are modality, skewness and kurtosis when we talk about normality. It's unimodal, it's relatively symmetrical, relatively normal in kurtosis or normally peaked. So all those things tell me the data is, is pretty well normal. So let's move forward. How do we standardize this? Well, the first thing to do, we've talked about before, very useful little trick is that you can name your data. So I'm gonna go and select all the data I have here under stress. And I'm just gonna call this stress. So I've named that whole series of data now stress in this top left column. So whenever you select cells, you can go up here and change the name. And this will allow you to name your data sets to reference later, which just speeds things up uh, if you're doing analyses with it. So now I need to know a few things about stress. First, I need to know what is the mean for my stress data? So I use the command here equals average and then I put stress. You could also select all the cells or type in the references. So here I've done the average of stress. Okay, so we see here that the mean for stress is 21.29. Um, so the next thing we need to know is what is the standard deviation. So we're going to do equals standard deviation for our stress. Okay, and so our standard deviation is 12.5. <clears throat> now here I used the command equals stdev stress being my data set. Remember, if you put stdev, Excel defaults to doing sample standard deviation, which is typically what you want. If you wanted to get a population standard deviation, you could do the standard dev p, which does population. Okay, uh, We're going to use the sample standard deviation here instead of the population one. So we have the mean and the standard deviation. And we know that this is relatively normally distributed. So we could say something like our data is normally distributed. And if we wanted to get the variance instead, um, people often write the variance. Uh, again, the variance is just the square of the standard deviation. So we can get the variance, excuse me, the variance of stress. 
And like I said, it is just the square. So if we took our standard deviation and we squared it, we notice that that is the exact same value we got with the VAR command, VAR stress, right, which gives us the variance. So now if we wanted to say, you know, this data is normally distributed with a mean of 21.29 and a variance of 156.04, you know, that is a full description of the normal distribution of this data. Now, if we wanted to make this data standard normal, we have to make it a normal distribution with a mean of zero and a variance of one. Now, of course, if your variance is one, the square root of one is one, so both the variance and standard deviation will be one in this case. You'll find some people annotate using the variance here, and some people use the standard deviation. Both are relatively acceptable. Um, just make sure you're clear with your notation. So if we want to turn a set of data that's got an average of about 21 and a standard deviation of about 12 and a half into a distribution with 0 and 1, we can do this really quickly using the standardized equation. Now we could go compute z-scores by hand. Computing the z-score by hand, what we do is we take an individual score. So for example, the first person here has a score of 30. We subtract from this score the mean for the data set, so we would use the average for the stress. Make sure to put that entire thing inside of parentheses if you're going to write this all in one command. So the first thing we've done here then is what we call centering our data in statistics. We've taken any score that is at the mean and now turned it into a zero because we subtracted the mean. And so centering our data tells us how far scores are from the mean. Now this next step of the z-score equation is to standardize these centered scores. So we standardize by, di by dividing by the standard deviation of the scores. And what this does now is it tells us how far scores are from the mean in standard deviation terms instead of in the original units. So by doing this, we now have scores that will have a mean of zero and a standard deviation or variance of one. And so this is the equation for standardize. So we see, for example, that this first score has a z-score of 0.7 if we round. Um, so what if we just use the standardize a function? So in Excel, we can type in standardize. You would select your score for x. You put in the mean. So here I'm going to get my average for my set of data stress. And then I need the standard deviation for stress. Okay. Once we've done that, let's see what we get the exact same score when we compute it by hand. So why do it all by hand? Now once we've done this, I can just autofill all the way through to get all of my z-scores for this data set. Now what I did there was I got this little box in the corner, my crosshairs turned black, you can click and then drag to autofill. You can also double click and it'll autofill very quickly through whatever the apparent series is to Excel. So this allows us to get these values very quick. Let's see what happens now for our set of z-scores. So I'm going to get this, and I'm going to name this set of data my z-scores. Okay. So let's see. Our average for z-scores, this is 0, in case you don't can't read this. This is scientific notation. So this says that the average is negative 5.18796 to the power of negative 17. So you'd move the decimal over 17 spaces. So this is, for all intents and purposes, zero. The only reason it's not zero is realistically rounding error. So we've now created a mean for z-scores. In fact, zero like they should be. Okay, And if we made this be in numeric format instead of in scientific notation, we see that in fact it will tell us it's zero. We'd have to go out exceedingly far in decimals to find a decimal place value way down here. So you see that this is zero. The mean for our data set is zero. <clears throat> now, what about the standard deviation? So we get the standard deviation of our z-scores and our standard deviation is one. So you see that this standardized command has taken our scores, which originally had the mean and standard deviation above, and has made them standard normal scores with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one in a relatively quick way. 
All right, so that is standardizing scores in Excel, as well as looking at aspects of normality using skewness, kurtosis, and histograms, um, and some quick tricks in Excel for how to autofill and other functions. Hopefully that helps a bit more.